Harry Agensky can be called the embodiment of the American dream. Having emigrated to the States at the age of 11 from Poland, the boy realized that his vocation was boxing. The next few years he trained hard and soon his labors bore fruit. Harry conquered the ring and the podium, transforming from a poor kid into world middleweight champion. But the achievements and accolades were in the past. Now Agnew is an infirm old man, living in oblivion for the past years in the home of his son Moses and his wife Rosanna in Canada. The second child, Vance, believes that his father never really cared about his dreams and ambitions. This has caused a strained relationship between him and his father. Ironically, the man himself has not succeeded as a father. His conversations with his 18-year-old son Michael often end in quarrels, after once divorced his wife and stopped paying attention to his firstborn. Nevertheless, father and son decide to call a truce to visit the elder Agensky. After a warm meeting with his uncle and aunt, Michael rushes to his grandfather's house and catches him watching reconstructive exercises. It turns out that the paralysis has caused Harry's partial loss of speech. He explains to his grandson that, despite his clear and lucid mind, he has no way of keeping up with the words. The young man seems concerned about his loved one's health, but his grandfather assures him that age only strengthens his spirit. While Moses guesses that the real reason for Vance's presence in his house is to force his father to confess his mistakes. Harry himself trains Michael and asks him never to go out to fight, worried that his paralysis served as payback for his big name. Flipping through an old scrapbook, the elder Agensky tells his grandson about the gangster Dolly of Reno, who paid him 13 diamonds to make the athlete intentionally lose the fight by surrendering to his opponent. Knowing that Harry's wife, Ailey, would never allow him to take the stolen gems, Boxer walled up the diamonds in one of the walls of the mobster's house with the condition that he could take them at any time. Michael's enthusiasm fades when he hears that his grandfather does not remember the exact address. However, the elderly man is adamant that he will find the stones, calling them magic. In a private conversation with his brother, Moses admits that things with his father are quite bad. Recently, Harry has been debauching in the bar, periodically mentioning magic diamonds. And now he dreams of settling down at the ranch, which he can't afford. An elderly man walks into the living room at the wrong time, hears scraps of conversation, and gets upset. In private, Vance tells his son that the story about the jewels is a tale Harry began telling after Ellie's death, and urges his son not to believe the old man. Nevertheless, Michael manages to convince his father to take his grandfather on a search for diamonds in Nevada. Under the cover of night, the trio escapes from the house without alerting Moses, and they set off on their journey. At the U.S. border, the heroes are met by an unfriendly customs officer. Harry's joke about the man's recovery program trainer lying in the trunk does not seem funny to him and he almost detains the men. After which Lance and Michael begin to regret that they got involved in the adventure. However, there is no turning back. Moses informs his brother that he can't bring his father home because he has sprayed toxic bug spray all over the place. After stopping at the nearest gas station, Harry seizes the initiative and confidently gets behind the wheel. The old man is so daredevil that he pulls into the oncoming lane and barely manages to avoid hitting an approaching truck. Wanting to reach his destination alive, Lance forces his father out of the driver's seat. As night falls, the in-laws decide to stop for a rest at a hotel, wherein the manager, a Jensik senior, recognizes his ring rival, Tarzan the Count. He gives his old friend Dove's number, and accompanies the guests to the room in which Elvis Presley once lived. The musician's song playing in the room reminds Harry of his wife. Upset, the man smashes the mirror until his grandson calms his grandfather down. 
Tarzan, who appears, demands blood for the damage done and in principle gets it. When Agent Senior punches him in the face, the trio does get the address of Dove's house for 32 Bracklin Avenue, but when they arrive at the place, they find only a mountain of trash and a mailbox. Harry is obsessed with finding the owner of the ruined building, assuming that he has taken the jewels. However, Lance manages to talk his father into having a spontaneous bachelor party at the casino, after Harry learns from the manager that Dove died in a shootout. All the Agneskis are raking in the cash at the games. Suddenly a melancholy mood descends on the elderly man and he goes to the alley to admire the stars and remember his beloved. Harry starts to dance when suddenly a robber appears and puts a knife to his throat. He forces Michael to give up all the cash, after which he escapes. Later, however, the trio manages not only to punish the thief with a hook, but also to get their money back. When the men return to the room, drama erupts. Harry is reminded of an unsightly Father's Day article that Lance wrote. He declares to his son that he doesn't deserve to be treated that way. The annoyed son explains that he expected his parents' attention and approval. However, the latter has decided to divert all his attention to Moses. Lance's words hurt Harry, for he has put everything on the line for the family. Time, health, and strength in the ring. Agniski realizes he's wasted his time talking when tears come to the old man's eyes. Oil is poured into the fire by Michael, who accuses his parent of weakness and admits that he didn't want to spend time with his father of his own volition. Trying to be better, Lance gives the teenager a chance to settle down before joining him on the roof, where he admits that he didn't want to let his relationship with Michael turn into the biggest regret of his life. The young man goes to meet his father and learns a lot about him. It turns out that Lance wasn't always a quiet man at one time he was just as much fun as his firstborn son. Having settled their differences, they go down to the restaurant. When his son asks what Harry most desires, the old man declares that he would like to spend the night with a woman, for he has been lonely for eight years. Lance tries to pacify his father, but the latter's authority plays a bad joke on the hero. Finding out that no one sitting at the table has been intimate in a long time. Harry finds the contacts of a brothel and forces his relatives to join him. Nirvana Trio finds somewhere outside the city, inside the building they are welcomed by the hostess, Cindy, who guesses that Michael is underage. Nevertheless, upon learning that a family project is coming up, she allows the young man one of her charges. Being a gentleman, the boy declares that he treats each of the girls with respect. Until he is stopped by a feisty blonde and taken upstairs. Harry leaves next, taking four members of the ancient profession and two bottles of champagne with him. While Lance receives an aggressive massage. From an ardent opponent of the bourgeoisie and a supporter of the display of animal instinct. His son struggles with his shyness to experience intimacy with the girl. Unexpectedly, he finishes before it begins. Meanwhile, Harry struggles with his own feelings. The foursome informs the mentor that the old man is frightened. Shinji immediately runs to his client's aid, learning the touching life story of the Polish prince who has lived with his beloved for nearly half a century, soul to soul, Agnenski unexpectedly asks her hostess to share her secrets. The companion confesses that as a provincial, she dreamed of being in a big city, but alas, her desires turned against her. But the woman does not regret her choice. Shinji discovers that after his wife's death, Harry fell into a prolonged depression and lost his will to live, and then partially lost the ability to speak the man realized in time that Ellie would not be happy with his weakness, which is why he began to train. Finally, Harry admits to his companion that he is afraid, but now he humbly tries to come to terms with this fact, rather than trying to ignore it. Meanwhile, Lance admits to his companion that she has kindled in him a long-extinguished fire. 
Suddenly, the searing brunette declares that she would go anywhere with the writer if he would take her with him. The narrative takes a steep turn when it turns out that Shinji is acquainted with Dawa's son, Damon, who, as it turns out, frequently visits Nirvana. The woman reports that the man has moved the family home into town. That's why the Agniskis find only the foundations from his building. Taking his son and grandson with him, Harry, in the middle of the night, goes to the son of a mobster who, without question, allows Rio to punch a hole in his kitchen wall and pull out a cherished box from which the heroes get nothing but a deck of cards. With a picture of Ellie in her youth, he once made a promise to his beloved that he would never show them to outsiders. He gazes fondly at the paper cards, talking about how much he loves his wife, and he pays no attention at all to the precious necklace that was lying next to her. On hearing about the diamonds, Damon pulls a revolver on his guests and orders them to leave the house. Later, Harry admits that the cost of the jewelry is $10 and declares that it is, in fact, a fake. After all the Ajenski family members visit Ellie's grave, the old man reiterates his intention to move to the farm, to the displeasure of Moses, who does not understand where his father will get the money. Later, Harry opens a secret compartment in a deck of cards and pulls out real diamonds, whose value has risen markedly over the past dozen years. He gives one each to his children and grandchildren and uses the rest to buy himself a house where he begins to live with Shinji. Harry tells Lance that he loves him and Michael, in turn, tells his relatives that he is going to move in with his father in San Francisco. Subscribe to the channel, like and do not forget to watch our other videos. Thank you very much for watching. See you again.